I'm Ken Moody and this is Ken Moody Hunting TV. On today's show, it's all bow hunting in Africa with me. We'll be back with all that action. Slick Trick Broadheads presents Ken Moody Hunting TV. Ken Moody Hunting TV is brought to you by Slick Trick Broadheads, Elite Archery, North Fork Technologies, True Fire Releases, Vapor Trail Archery, Gunner's Taxidermy, Fauna and Flora Custom House Brokerage, and Ken and Paul's Family Steakhouse. Our first hunt today is for a species that is very common in Africa, the warthog. Everybody knows what it is, but I'm telling you they're a lot of fun to hunt and I enjoy taking this one and I was very lucky to do so, so let's have a look. This is a warthog. This is a huge old boy. Man, he came in. I mean, I was ho humming around up in the tree stand. I had my glass to my left. There he was, right on the water. And this is exactly the way he fell. I promise you, we are only about uh, 75 yards from the tree stand. And down he went. I saw him go down in a cloud of dust. I put it right through the shoulder, which you have to do on a warthog. And down he goes. Beautiful, beautiful warthog, if a warthog can be called beautiful. <laughs> He's a big male. He's got two sets of warts on both sides. He's an old hog. He's all skin up here. Man, you want to talk about a lot of character. This old pig has a lot of character. Beautiful, beautiful, and perfectly shot. I am fired up. Now you want to talk about taking completely off guard. That was me with this warthog. I was up in the tree stand about 20 yards off the water hole and I'm not sure what I was doing. I was fumbling with the camera. I was fooling around with something and I just happened to glance down and there that big, big pig was right at the water. And that's the way they do it. Boy, they come in, they usually circle the water hole, they check scent with their nose and I never saw this warthog until he was actually right there on the water hole unbelievable that I was able to get the camera reoriented, get it in focus, and zoom while he's drinking, get the bow off the bow rack, draw the bow and take the shot, you know, all before that boar uh, took off and ran. But hey, what about that, that big old warthog? What about that big set of tusks? Now in Africa, a male warthog will have four warts. They have two on each side whereas a female only has one. A big male like the one I shot will uh, look disproportionate. His head will look larger than his body or too big for his body and he will have uh, uh, tusks that extend out from his upper lip. Now those upper tusks are ivory and the lower tusks are just like our wild boar in the States. They're regular tusks but the upper tusks are ivory. A very unique trophy uh, but common in Africa and very inexpensive to hunt. So I like to tag and bag a lot of warthogs when I get the chance. But hey, after the messages, we'll be back with more Plains Game Hunting action. We'll be right back with more Ken Moody Hunting TV. The hunting crew ready to go if they can quit watching Stone Cold Steve Austin in his <laughs> theatrical debut.
That is a beautiful deer. Where's your camera, baby? Oh, Lord. <laughs> and a fallow deer hits the ground in the snow. Oh, 18 degrees. Head. Just lay it on there, baby. Sergeant Rock. Hold the antlers. That is a pretty deer. Where's my camera not work? Cold weather. <laughs> yeah, mine's working fine, man. <laughs> One shot, what is that, 270? Yes. One shot, 270 on the ground. Good job. <laughs> Our next hunt today did not go quite as I had planned. Uh, and sometimes that happens, but let's have a look. First in there. All these cows are running around. No, wait, wait, he's moving, he's moving. He's moving towards that little pool of water. Okay, okay, steady, steady, steady. Oh man. Okay, there he goes. There he goes. It was a little far back. A little far back. Okay. No, he's, he's just standing on the other side of the rocks. I can just see the tips of his horns. Okay, now he's moving off. Yeah, they're moving off, but they're moving off slowly. Okay, we've got to give him time. We've got to give him time. He was quartering away. Uh, slightly, but he was just about to get behind the rocks and I wasn't going to get a shot so I took him as he was moving and I hit him looked about four inches back from where I wanted to. This is truly, truly a magnificent red heart of beast bull. I mean, really. After that dismal shot, I was concerned that uh, I was concerned that I didn't hit him exactly where I wanted to, which I didn't. But we gave him a good long time. We gave this animal an hour and a half before we took up the track, and uh, he didn't go very far. He was probably only about. Uh, or 500 meters from the from the water hole but he is truly magnificent big heavy based sweat back horns this is one of Africa's most unique animals truly an exotic animal a red hearted beast bull and I am just so happy we've we've located him now that was a very large record book red hearted beast bull and he came in he was the herd bull with a large group of cows and they came in and meandered around and meandered around. The problem was the water hole I was hunting was to my direct front, but we had had some rain and there was a little pool of water and some rocks just above the water hole. And that's where these uh, heart of beasts were drinking. And I was waiting and waiting and waiting and the cows were in the way and moving around and then that big bull started making his way to that small pool of water 
that was above and behind the little rock ledge you saw there uh, from the main water hole. So I drew my bow and, and actually I had to rush my shot, which I don't like to do, uh, in order to tag that big bull. And as you see, I hit him uh, about four inches back from where I needed to hit him. Uh, it did quarter in though, I was able to take the offside lung and we gave that, uh, we gave that big old uh, bull about an hour and a half to two hours before we took up the track. I put my trackers on the track. They, they were able to take the track with the herd as the bull stayed with the herd. And then he separated out from the herd. And that's where it gets real tricky and that's why you need excellent trackers, you know, for an animal that starts out potentially as a wound. The trackers will get on the track and they will stay with the herd and stay with the herd, but they constantly have to check to, uh, to make sure that the bull or the animal that's wounded doesn't pull out of the herd. And uh, after rechecking the backtrack a few times, they were, they were able to determine that the bull had uh, moved off from the herd because he was wounded. And they took that track and in about uh, four or 500 meters, we found that big bull on the ground. Fortunately, I shot this big bull around noon. So we were able to give him a few hours and then take up the track. We found him just before dark. But again, be patient. If you make a shot, you know it's a bad shot. If you're on a guided hunt, tell the guide where you think you hit it. You know, don't give him the optimistic, oh, I think it was in there because of this or that. If it's a gut shot, tell him straight away it's a gut shot, and that guide will know exactly what to do and how long to wait. But anyway, those things happened. I was very happy to recover that big bull, and man, what a trophy. Big, huge, 23-inch Red Heart of Beast bull that I'm uh, proud to call my own. But <clears throat> things happen. <laughs> After the messages, we'll be right back with our last hunt. We've got more action coming up. Stay tuned. Ken Moody Hunting TV. We'll be right back. bad hit on this little diker. He came up to the water hole and he had us busted in that high and he kept looking around and looking around and looking around. I started to draw the bow, he caught me doing that and uh, I finally I got the full draw and he was uh, he was pretty alert and I took the shot. I mean look at the horns on this little guy. Trophy diker. <laughs> That's not the way we like to do it but it worked anyway you know like I said I don't know what happened he he may have bolted just before the arrow got there he knew we were there and he saw me at full draw. But uh, I was afraid he was going to make a break, so I took the shot and uh, did the job. That's all that matters, I guess. Sometimes it ain't as pretty as you'd like it to be, but as long as the results are the same, you're happy. So anyway, let's get him back to where we're going and uh, see what else can happen today. Our last hunt today is for a species commonly called the poor man's buffalo, the blue wildebeest. And nothing is as tough as a buffalo on the Plains game side as a blue wildebeest. They're big, they're strong, they're tough, and you really have to place that arrow in the right spot to make, uh, to make it count. So let's see what happens when uh, these four big wildebeest bulls showed up at my water hole. I'm gonna try to take the big bull in the front. He gives me the shot.
All I want to say is, what about that? We've been here 30 minutes. We had the Impala Rams, Zebra, and this herd of all bull wildebeest. I mean, every one of these wildebeest came in were a big bull. Uh, I'm whispering because they're still over there. The bull, I, the bull I've shot is down. He didn't go anywhere. He's on the ground. And uh, they came in. And he gave me an angle briefly, but I wasn't sure if we, if we were capturing it on video. So I didn't shoot at the first moment. And then he moved around. And that first one that came in is the one I wanted. He was re he's really a nice bull. He stepped out in the water, gave me the shot, boom, and he has collapsed uh, within sight. He's not 100 yards away, he's on the ground. Let's go take a look at this wildebeest. We don't have to track it. Boom, he's right here. I'm talking a whole lot of loving, and I have a whole lot of loving for this big blue wildebeest bull. Nothing symbolizes Africa more than the blue wildebeest. He's a big, strong animal, and he takes a perfectly placed arrow to bring him down. And that's what we did. We shot him through both shoulders. He ran 100, 100 yards and expired right here. This is, uh, like I said, one of Africa's most recognizable species. He's one of my favorites, called the poor man's buffalo, because he's an inexpensive alternative to a Cape buffalo. And he looks a lot like a Cape Buffalo. I mean, we've got a big head, massive boss on this buffalo. His horns extend about two inches past the ears. So this bull is gonna be 28 to 29 inches. He's a record book candidate, and he is really a, a beautiful animal. That's the way we like to do it in Africa. Perfectly shot, watch the animal run, watch him fall in sight. This bull took off, he was double lunged, he ran about 100 yards and fell over. And the emphasis and the point I want to make on this particular hunt is about shot placement. African game is not like North American game. Most of the lungs and the good stuff is further forward in African game than in North American game. You have to try to take that animal in the back of the shoulder or in the crease to ensure you get a good double lung shot. Now, I know a lot of you watched that and you thought, oh, it's too far forward, he shot him in the shoulder. But through the shoulders is, is absolutely the best shot placement on Africa's Plains game because, again, the vitals are so far forward. The problem I have with my clients that come to Africa is they get that so in their head that they shoot too far forward and they get up in the brisket and they, they, they just get it completely out of the vitals. I don't want people that hunt with us to get too wrapped up about that and uh, I tell them just to shoot for the crease try to put it in the crease right there behind the shoulder and we'll find the animal but again if you get the perfect shot from safaripress.com it will show you the anatomy and the vital location on practically every species in Africa but hey that's our show for today I hope you enjoyed it I really enjoy uh, hunting Africa I own a safari company there and if any of you out there are interested in coming to Africa Go to our website, take a look, and give me a call or send me an email. I'll be happy to answer all your questions. And remember, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. <music>